but it's the season of investor conferences and on our radar today is the Motila Losfall Global Investor Conference which is underway in Mumbai right now. Gautam Sina Roy, fund manager at Motila Losfall Mutual Fund is with us now. Of course, Nimish is also there. Uh, Gautam, good afternoon. So, thoughts on, uh, you know, the last uh, couple of weeks uh, and last month actually has been quite volatile. Uh, do you get a sense that this could be the, the first genuine correction of this bull market and we could actually uh, see a 5 or 6 percent correction from here on as well because of geopolitical issues? You know, when I think about all the risk factors that could be there on the table, the only palpable one today is the geopolitical one, where some, you know, uh, political instability or some warlike situation somewhere in the world, hopefully not in our neighborhood, creeps up and that really spooks markets. And we saw a brief, uh, we are actually uh, seeing that coming up on our radars as we speak. And yeah, from, from, a, from a tail risk perspective, that is scary because this is not something that the world has seen for some time. And uh, we will only get to know what happens when it happens. So that is creeping up. The tail risk that was there, the only visible risk for markets that was there on the table is suddenly uh, being seen live in action. So yeah, it, it is something that we need to monitor as investors. But as long-term investors, there's no real way around it. So we can't really hedge for these kind of risks. So, you know, it's just a part of the process of, uh, of investing. Having said that, markets have been richly priced, so we know that there is room for correction. So if that correction does come in, uh, there's nothing to fear. There is, uh, you have to, it's part of the process of investing. You have to sure. go through that and hopefully find better levels to invest at for okay. the future cash flow that you're generating. Okay, right. I can sense a lot of buzz, uh, you know, in the background, Gautam. Uh, so I'm, uh, you know, assuming that the participation is really big in the conference. Uh, yeah. You know, two, two companies which presented today, uh, ICICI Bank and Lupin, both have been underperformers. Uh, you heard, uh, you know, CEOs of both companies today. Are you, are you getting any confidence? Uh, do you think these stocks could correct their underperformance soon or would you rather stick to the outperformers? You know, uh, I'll not uh, just go into the stocks, but if you look at the corporate banking space, the NPA issues definitely have bottomed out. But are they really going to improve very sharply from here? That is the key call. That's clearly not, uh, not on the table. But yeah, the stocks are, the corporate banks, some of them are really cheap. X of the subsidiary valuations, if you look at them, they are really cheap. So there's value on the table in these stocks, but will that value re uh, get realized or gets trans uh, translated into performance in the next one year, a couple of years? That's a big question mark even today. Similarly, for large cap pharma, I think a lot of the pricing pressure issues might be behind us, but is there a very sharp revival in growth going forward? That's also clearly not on the table, right? So these are good companies, they are uh, value companies, they are available at uh, decent valuations today, but we do not see that growth kicker coming out, either in large cap pharma or in corporate banks today, as we speak. But th these are monitorable, so we'll keep a close watch on both these set of companies and see when that growth comes back. Sooner or later it has to, because these companies are very good companies, right? Uh, Gautam, uh, thanks for joining uh, from the sidelines. Uh, you spoke about one risk, which is a geopolitical risk. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, no, go ahead. No, no, Nimesh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll come back. Yeah, yeah please go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, uh, okay. So, uh, Gautam, you know, you, you spoke about the key risk right now is the geopolitical risk. But how big is the earnings risk according to you? Because, the, again, earnings are not picking up and valuations are quite stressed. So, how much that you're factoring in when you look at identifying stocks? So, I think, you know, the, uh, the way earnings risk is playing out is it's creating a cap for the market. So, it will not allow the market to really rally okay. very fast from here unless earnings uh, uh, plays catch up. But I'm also hopeful, you know, I remain optimistic about the fact that earnings may the base is really low now. It's not grown for more than three years. Four years now, yeah. Second half, or, yeah, four years now. Second half of this year, again, we are hit by Demon last year. Then, uh, GST, you know, GST-related no? trouble. So going forward from H2 of this year, can earnings not really grow at a decent clip? I think they can because the base is low. Okay. And uh, some sort of gradual recovery is creeping in in uh, different parts of the economy. So. What we'll really wait for is broadening of the growth, you know, okay. so multiple sectors have to start and kickstart growth okay. and that will really create the upside risk to markets okay. and that will really co cause the markets to comfortably rally from Okay. So, so within the earnings you know, bracket, which are the sectors you think 
can see a positive surprise from here on because if the, if the earnings are too broad based, few sectors are to outperform, right? Yeah. So the sectors that I would be looking for for positive surprise would be the consumption oriented sectors. Okay. Because that's where the low base is also set, uh, you know, very strongly. And especially the rural consumption part, where you know, uh, good monsoons, government's focus on that part of the economy should hopefully kickstart uh, the growth process back there. The second would be, you know, the government's one clear focus area is affordable housing. Mm. So if the supply side gets created, and house construction in generally is a domain which has a lot of serious follow-on impact on different parts of the economy. So. If affordable housing construction momentum picks up, I'm sure that will result in, that will be the part of infra, that will be like the next uh, leg of the infra story. So that will create, uh, result in job creation, demand for cement and steel, and hence multiplier effects on the economy. Okay. Uh, Gautam, I know you've been, uh, you've been bullish on the selective autos. Even in your portfolio, I can see the likes of Maruti and Aisha. We saw the uh, last you know, monthly sales number and they look quite impressive. You think autos as a, as a space are in a sweet spot and, and it will probably outperform? Yes, they are. They are. I think uh, the, you know, we prefer passenger vehicles and uh, the you know, premiumization theme in two-wheelers. Those two themes continue to be sweet spotted. Beyond that, yeah, of course, uh, we have seen some decent numbers. Festive season is affronted this year, so you know, that is also contributing to some extent. But yeah, some of these uh, companies that uh, the auto companies that we hold continue to deliver very good volume numbers, and we uh, we are enthused by those numbers. Sure. Uh, Gautam, afternoon. Uh, what are your thoughts in terms of what the interest level is for, say, the media slash entertainment space? Uh, there's been a lot of buzz generated in, around the likes of Sun TV. Even today, that stock is up 4%, reacting to the IPL rights being bought for over 16,000 crores by Star for the next five years. Is there any formidable interest in any of the media entertainment stocks from your end? So we don't own uh, too many of these media stocks. Uh, one of the reasons there, of course, is valuation. You know, growth is there. Uh, I think growth will be good for this sector. In spite of the fact that digital is eating away part of the ad revenue grows uh, that is there for the entire industry, that is happening, that is a challenge. But in spite of that, good content creators is something that you can, can continue to be positive on from a growth perspective. But beyond growth, there's also valuation. So, you know, in, even in our QGLP framework, P has a very definite and important point. And there, somewhere, we are not finding that comfort today. Valuations are rich in many of these stocks. So, we have been away, but this is a sector that is, again, definitely on the radar for us. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but one sector which is pretty much on the radar for you, for Ramdev as well, is the a, is a financial space, whether it's yeah. banks, NBFCs, housing finance companies, all have, been do, all have done well and you continue to be bullish on that space. Is there a valuation discomfort now or do you think the growth itself will take care of the valuations? I think uh, compared to where they were last year at the same time, valuations are richer. There's no doubt about that and that so on a relative scale there is a little bit more of discomfort I would say. But having said that, is there money to be made on the table for a long-term investor who is going to remain invested in these stocks for three to five years at least? Definitely yes. Because the growth rates are going to be very good. The companies that are uh, doing well will continue to do well. There will be uh, continued market share shifts to all these guys. And uh, I think, yeah, for the select names which generate very good return on assets and have great management teams, good strategy in place, growing at a fast pace, there is money to be made on the table. But you'll have to be patient. I don't think there is a lot of re-rating gains any longer, but the earnings compounding story will give you enough returns for the next three years. So before I let you go, Gautam, uh, you, you, within that finance, to take that financial uh, argument forward, the other space which is going to see a lot of action in terms of paper is the insurance space. I know you, you, you have an exposure to Max India, Max Financial, but there are a lot of uh, insurance paper coming up. Is that the space which is going to consistently deliver in terms of returns? Yes. This is one area that we'll continue to remain excited about. Because, you know, one thing that is uh, happening is uh, a shift of physical savings to financial savings. And somewhere insurance is in India more a savings instrument rather than just an insurance instrument. So we are, insurance companies are getting benefits out of that, still when the situation. Plus we have uh, quite a few good quality companies, good management in place. And we believe that this is an, this is an industry where the runway of growth is really long. So, yeah, if you are a long-term investor in India, insurance is 
is the sunrise sector. So we'll continue to be very bullish in different parts of the insurance uh, value chain. Let you go there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Where do you guys? Okay, Nimesh, thanks a lot for that. Well, the stock on the radar right now should be Reliance Capital. Just pull out the intraday chart. Technically, today's expiry for Reliance Capital.